Greetings, everyone, and happy fall. Autumn officially began about 11 hours ago at the time of the fall equinox. Here is the description for the presentation that we're going to experience now. The fall equinox is often associated with the harvest. In this presentation, Grandmaster Julie Scott will invite us to consider how what we experience today is a result of the thoughts and actions we have planted and nurtured in the past. She will also share some simple Rosicrucian techniques to help us enjoy and appreciate what we have at the moment and to plant the seeds to experience radiant health, fulfillment, and peace profound in the future. So that is what we're going to be discussing now. A harvest is often described as gathering crops or collecting the fruits of what we have planted. And this expands beyond just agriculture. What we experience today, we planted the seeds for in the past. And here's an analogy. Imagine that you walk to your refrigerator and you open the door, and amazingly, there are all your favorite foods. And then you realize you're the one who put all of those favorite foods there. So you have this harvest right there, wherever you live, because you had a vision of what you wanted to eat, and then you took action. You went to the grocery store or the market and bought food and put it in your refrigerator. This is what happens with the harvest. People plant crops and they grow, and then we're able to benefit from them in the future. The food in your refrigerator is a result of the thoughts and actions you planted and nurtured in the past in a very practical way. And that's going to be the focus of this presentation, practical actions that we can, that we can take that help us to be co-creators with the divine. Now, of course, it's important to visualize what we want in life. And if you had a vision of what you wanted to eat, you would think about what you want to eat, you took action, and now you're benefiting from it. You've done this in other areas of your life too. For example, if you're employed, every two weeks or every month, money arrives in your bank account or you're handed a check. This isn't miraculous. This is the result of you having completed whatever training was necessary, whatever education was needed for your job, you applied for the job, you provide the work, you are benefiting from things that you can be grateful that your past self did. You can be grateful for the harvest that you reap because of your past actions. And we do this in every area of our life. We do it with relationships with people. The relationships that we have are the result of actions that we've had in the past. With being a Rosicrucian, your being a Rosicrucian today is the result of actions that you took in the past. Now, it's acknowledged that sometimes our refrigerator may go out or our local market may not carry the same foods as other people's local markets, or jobs or other opportunities may not be available to someone because of their gender or their, the color of their skin or the um, experiences. Still, all of us are harvesting things and situations that we planted by our previous self. So I invite you now to think of things that exist in your life right now, that you benefit from right now, that are the result of your past actions. When your past self invested in your future self, which is you now, when your past self planted the seeds for what you are now harvesting. So think about some of those benefits that you receive today based on 
the seeds that you planted in the past and give thanks for them. Pause to thank the divine for whatever the experience or the person or the condition is that you're benefiting from today. And give thanks to your past self, to you in the past, because you took action. We're also going to plant the seeds now to experience radiant health, peace profound, and fulfillment in the future. When I was writing the description for this presentation, I wasn't quite sure of which word to use, whether it would be fulfillment or contentment. Contentment is that we are happy with things as they are. And there are certainly a lot of benefits to being happy with things as they are. Some people even say that's, that's the basis of happiness. If you're happy with how things are now, that is happiness or contentment. Fulfillment is when our abilities and talents are being used. So we're going to stretch ourselves related to fulfillment. And we'll begin with radiant health. Maybe you're content with your health. You're satisfied with the way things are. Maybe you're content even though your health may be less than radiant because taking the extra steps to be radiant healthy, radiantly healthy is more work than you want to do. Or it might mean giving up a false sense, a false belief about yourself. Sometimes we don't change because we're so used to a belief that we have about ourselves. Maybe you're not experiencing radiant health because when you get home from work, you're exhausted or you're overwhelmed and need the tranquilizing effect of zoning out in front of the television or on the internet. Or maybe no matter how many times you recite that you want radiant health, you still repeat the old patterns that don't produce radiant health. We're going to address these now. And radiant health is not just for today. The time to start taking care of our health is not when we feel bad or in our old age. It's best, best if our healthy habits have already been established before then. The time to establish radiant health is now. You're planting this for your future self. Think of how grateful you are for what's in your refrigerator or your relationships or your job that you have now because of something that you did in the past. And this can be any part of creating the conditions for radiant health. I invite you to think of one area of your health that can be improved, that can be more radiant. Maybe it's that you could um, eat more healthy or that you can get better rest or you can stop smoking if you smoke or you can exercise regularly. I mentioned a number of times of the benefits of walking 10,000 steps per day. Scientists are certain that this adds years to our lives and it adds quality to those years, just walking 10,000 steps a day. So let's say that we choose that goal. We decide that we want to exercise more and we're going to choose walking 10,000 steps a day. So first, we can visualize and feel how we want to experience that final goal. So please do that now. Take a moment and feel what that is going to feel like when you experience radiant health. And you can see yourself five years in the future or 10 years in the future. See yourself as a radiantly healthy 
being Now that's a very important part of creating and planting this for our future. Then we're going to take practical steps to manifest this. We're co-creating with the divine. We're not asking the divine to do all the work for us. Again, that's our focus in this presentation, what we can do and how we can be successful in planting a preferred future for ourselves, knowing that things will still happen that we will need to address, but putting the odds in our favor for planting what we want to experience in the future. For example, exercising or eating healthy are more beneficial than visualizing radiant health or any amount of vowel sounds that we may do. Actually doing something, practically doing it, is more important than just visualizing it. And again, the sooner we start, the better. Smoking for 20 years is better than smoking for 30 years. Being at a weight that's not optimal for us for 20 years is better than being at a weight that's not optimal for us for 30 years. So the sooner we take action, the more effective it will be. And this applies to any goal we may have. It applies to getting a job that better uses our skills or a preferred relationship. Now we're going to explore some techniques that can help us succeed in, our, in achieving our goal. First, take small steps. Take small steps. Researchers have found that people are more successful when we take small steps rather than trying to take on a massive goal all at once. For example, let's say that we set our goal to walk 10,000 steps per day by three months from now. So that would be by December 23rd. So by October 23rd, in one month, our goal can be to walk a third of that, 3,300 steps per day. Then the next month, by November 23rd, to walk 6,600 steps per day. So that by December 23rd, three months from now, we're walking 10,000 steps per day. This is just an example. Again, maybe you want to improve your diet or stop smoking or, or lose weight. You can set up small steps for those goals too. The second tool that we have to put the odds in our favor to manifest what we're visualizing is to establish time blocks during our day. Just like when we establish time blocks on Thursday nights, or another time for our sanctum periods. It takes about one minute to walk 100 steps or 10 minutes to walk 1,000 steps. So a third of our goal of 10,000 steps, 3,300, may take around 33 minutes. We can plan that time into our day. So we have set aside 33 minutes. That's a block that is set aside for us. Then we can reach the, then when we reach the 6,600 step goal, we can set, schedule two of those blocks of time, either together or separately, maybe one in the morning and one in the afternoon. But it's much more, it seems much more feasible, much more doable to have these blocks. We know we can set aside that 33 minutes in order to do our steps. Now, if we don't end up walking, we can spend some of that time analyzing what we did instead. A lot of times when we set a goal and we don't achieve that, it's so disheartening that we just give up on it. Instead though, we can use that as a valuable opportunity to learn why didn't I go out and do my 33 minutes of steps that day? Or why didn't I 
take the steps to find this job that I want today. See what it is that's blocking us. Maybe we crashed on the couch because we were exhausted. Or maybe we were still working. Maybe we're still at the office working. Or maybe we needed to pick up our kids, our grandkids at school. So even if you don't achieve your goal, you get extra credit for recognizing why you didn't. So celebrate this. Give it attention. If you can figure out why you're resisting doing something that you know is better for you than what you're doing, that should be a big celebration. This also then helps to release that block that is keeping us from doing what we know might be better for us. This is a huge accomplishment if we can see why we're not moving toward a goal that we've said that we want. Then we get back on the horse and we try it again. And when we do reach our goal, there is a special bonus for us. Dopamine. You may be familiar with this. This is um, a hormone that is produced by the brain and it helps us feel good. Our brain releases dopamine which causes positive feelings such as happiness, pleasure, and motivation. That's what happens when we achieve our goals, why it feels good. And when we are positively motivated to do something, we not only take pleasure in completing whatever that task is, we also give attribute positive feelings toward repeating the process because we know we're going to get another surge of dopamine that makes us feel good or makes us feel happy. Isn't that ingenious? Whoever or whatever created that in our brain. And one very simple way that we can set the conditions to get those dopamine hits is through an often overlooked superpower called a to-do list. I've spoken about to-do lists before. I love my to-do list and I've learned why I like it. When we create a to-do list, you know, you have a list of all the things you're going to do today. It creates tension in our system. Our system wants closure and these things we have to do. So it produces tension. When we're able to cross something off our to-do list, when we cross it off our to-do list, when we have closure, it creates relief and we get a surge of dopamine, the feel-good hormone. Evolution is so amazing. In order to get things done, incomplete tasks create tension. And when we complete them, we are rewarded with a feel-good hormone that also makes us want to do it again. And we should keep several to-do lists, one with all the tasks we're working on at a, in a certain period, and one just for today. The bigger to-do list helps us to not feel overwhelmed. We know there are like 15 things we have to do, but who can process that? So we're, we're noting them. We're getting a handle on them by having them on the bigger to-do list. And then every day, we add steps to complete whatever the most important of those tasks are on our daily to-do list. And again, we create, create little blocks of time so that it's not, well, some, sometime today I'll get this done. It helps to relieve that overwhelming pressure and gives us the dopamine hit when we complete a task. The fourth technique that can help us to reach our goals is to have a buddy. And you may have found this in whatever goal you're working toward. You can have a running buddy. You can have a buddy in a program to overcome addiction. Having a buddy is having someone to share our successes with and even our non-successes. Maybe there's a walking group in your area that you can join. So you all get together and um, you have support. 
And if you don't have a walking group in your area, you can start one. It's so easy to post things online. You can create a meetup group for um, like here in San Jose, we could have um, the, the um, city rose gardens very nearby. We could have the um, San Jose rose garden walkers and just create a group and whatever at whatever time, go out and meet other people and walk through the neighborhood. If you need a buddy to get started, you can write to your class master in the Department of Instruction. The email is instruction at rosacrucian.org. And we have a team of class masters, you know, who answer questions about the Rosicrucian teachings. And we're going to help you. If you need a buddy to get started on your goal, you can let us know what your goal is and how you're going to achieve it. You can let us know how you're doing. You can let us know when you didn't reach your goal, but you know why you didn't. That would get a big celebration. So we'll help you get started. When choosing a goal, choose something challenging. Although it seems counterintuitive, the most enjoyable things to our brain are difficult. Brain research indicates that we reach a state of flow or maximum positive brain stimulation when we're doing something difficult. Again, evolution wants progress. So we haven't, revol we haven't evolved to receive an extra surge of dopamine because we walked 100 steps. We have to have the tension of a challenging goal. I mentioned that contentment is when we are satisfied with things as they are, and it feels especially good when our past actions and thoughts now provide things or situations that we feel good or are helpful to us. Fulfillment is when our abilities and talents are being used. And I'm going to suggest that this has something to do with you being a Rosicrucian and contributes greatly to the feeling of peace profound. Let me say this again. Fulfillment is when our abilities and talents are being used. Something attracted you to apply to be a member of the Rosicrucian order. You were searching for something more. And it's, it's not a common thing. And it's not an easy thing to establish the discipline of going to our sanctums every week, practicing the exercises and experiments and, ex and meditations. When we've had visioning and planning sessions at the Grand Lodge, three themes come up of what members find are the most inspiring experiences for them. And any or all of these can lead to a feeling of fulfillment when our abilities and talents are being used. The first of these is feeling a connection. And members report that their experience as a Rosicrucian helps them to feel with other people of like mind, with their fellow frauders and sorors. It helps them to feel a connection with the order itself that has contributed to society for centuries and will continue on after us and a connection with our place in the vast universe. So that's one reason that many members say, that's, those are some, connection is one of the main things that has inspired Rosicrucian members. The next is that we have mystical experiences, that our initiations, our rituals, our monographs, our sanctum periods, they're intended to set the conditions for us to have mystical experiences. And the last is access to knowledge that can transform our lives. So these are the three main reasons that members typically share on why they became, why, why they sought the Rosicrucians, a connection, mystical experiences, and access to knowledge that can transform our lives. So I invite you now to consider 
What were you searching for when you joined the Rosicrucian Order? Please close your eyes and think about this. What were you searching for when you joined the Rosicrucian Order? Again, maybe it was a connection. Maybe it was mystical experiences. Access to knowledge. Or maybe even something else. Now, how can you enhance that? How can this contribute to your fulfillment when your abilities and talents are being used? Visualize what that looks like. And plan what actions you can take to co-create that with the divine. For example, you can participate in an affiliated body or an upcoming convention or in one of the groups in Rosicrucian community in order to connect with others. You can be earnest in carrying out the rituals and experiments and exercises during your sanctum periods. You can apply what you've been learning in your monographs in your daily life. All of these are actions that we can take. Again, think of actions that you can take to visualize, to manifest, enhancing what drew you to the Rosicrucian order. In this way, we can plant the seeds today for what will be available for our future self to harvest. Commit now to take the next step to plant the seeds today. for what will contribute most to your talents and abilities being used, your fulfillment, to your radiant health, and a peace profound. So mote it be.